Hello guys, welcome back to Friday's video here at Bearham Engines. Been here for four days now, it's now Thursday, and um, I'm getting on top of everything, getting stuff ordered, getting things organized. So first of all, this Cosworth here, which I haven't even started yet, um, the gent is coming up from Plymouth, so I think today actually, to drop the crank up. He forgot to drop the crank off. We've got a set of one mil pistons because she's at one, uh, half mil already. Um, these are ones that I ordered in and they have been, I pocketed those yesterday. Um, so that is sort of ready to be bored. The Subaru, where are we with that? You see, it's all pretty much stripped now and you can see the crank is basically US guys. It's not salvageable. Um, number one looks absolutely nasty but it's actually number two that had gone which is this one um, so that visibly doesn't look too bad and that is probably what a lot of mechanics would say oh no it looks um the journal looks absolutely perfect can you just supply a set of bearings but it's actually not guys it's mullered um and the, so is the comrade so i have sent over i've worked out where we are with it i've sent over a guesstimate to the um the customer and he's looking with the VAT, he's looking getting on six and a half thousand quid to sort this thing out. You need a new crankshaft, which we can get, um, a new nitrided crank, brand new set of genuine rods, um, which actually aren't bad. The parts are not badly priced actually for this. Um, genuine gaskets and all the rest of the relevant bits. So yeah, he's looking at sort of five and a half plus the VAT. That's obviously sort of a standard four, what we call a four cylinder build really by the time we've cleaned up all the crank cases and all the rest of it. It's a real shame for the guy, let's put it that way. Um, so where else are we? We have got, you see my BMW engine has been moved off this bay here. That is over there. Um, obviously we're not gonna be doing a lot with that and it's pretty much done anyway. So we have got the go ahead off the Mercedes six cylinder. So that's the one that was sitting over there on that table for quite some time. Um, I think the lady owns this car and she was saving up the money. I did send an estimate and she's given us the go ahead and got the money now. So off we go with it, guys. We've fortunately, we cleaned up quite a lot of the parts when we had Paul in. Um, so yeah, we've got the pistons, which are quite hard to get somewhere. Um, and we've got to bore the block now, etc. So where is the block down here? Let's have a little look. Yeah, here's the block and we have got the pistons somewhere. I know John has. Um, BMW bits look absolutely mental. We have now absolutely knee deep in M3 stuff and BMW six cylinder stuff. So if any of you guys are interested in a, an M3 motor, a 3.2 um, S50, please ring us up. We can either sell a donor motor or we can do you an engine. We've got all the bits here, so yeah. Give us a bell, guys. Help us get rid of this. M20, if someone wants this, give us a shout, whether they want it built or they want it as it is. We need it out of the way, guys. We've got the gearbox here from the 325. Just let's get rid of some stuff. This is getting ridiculous. We've got all the stuff over here, which we've still got to go through and clean for our E30. Ridiculous. Um, but anyway, moving on. What am I doing today? First job. This is a Cosworth block, 200 block, um, and it's had the six long studs already. It's been bored, so um, no problem there. All we've got to do with this is check it all through, make sure it's all good for the customer to build. So the first thing I'm doing, guys, is whenever we have a, a block that's in, that's been long studded, usually you find that it's the, those, what's it studs, where are they? It's these studs here, which are like the old school ones. We've got the built-in washer, um, you know, the usual story. See there, they don't go deep enough. So the first thing I've done is ordered in that bag there, ordered two more of the longer studs from Julian Godfrey. And I am just gonna drill down an extra five mil in these lugs. You can see the lugs up there. Fortunately, we've got core plugs we can take out. You see those lugs? We need to go another five mil. So if I just, we haven't done it yet, but it's all lined up. If I just go to the bottom of that hole with this drill, you can see there on my little tape markers, that's the standard height that it goes to. And we're gonna to go to this next line up here. Um, and that is another five mil. And all that does is just ensures that because of the tension, it doesn't break that lug off or snap a bit off of it because you're buggered then. 
Um, so we just do that in this one here and this one here, and that is the opposing side to the oil gallery. Um, and all the rest should be absolutely fine. So that's what I'm doing there. And then this Cosworth block here, which I honed and bored yesterday, this one has gone to 92 mil, just waiting for the pistons. But I'm pretty sure being Wiseco, um, I know that the clearance I've given it is going to be right, but we'll check that when they come in. Uh, but this one is another one that I'm going to be long stood in. So that is next on to the milling machine, guys. And that is it for this morning's work. Right, guys, I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing. So I've got this Cosworth uh, flywheel up on the lathe here. And I've already taken a couple of cuts and you can see sort of in these areas, um, they're, they're all hard spots. It's sort of all around that central area where it's sort of a bit distorted. They're quite bad in this one. But I'm just gonna change the tip. So if I just quickly dig out all the swarf in that Allen keyhole. Just undo that. So just undone that all the way. That's pop the tool up. Just get that off. And you can see it focuses. You can see there that the tool is chipped. So I'm going to use this edge now. Just going to flip it round. It's a multi edge tool. So Do that back up. So I've touched on, got the machine on, and we're in gear 3M, which is 170 RPM. And I'm just gonna start the truck. Unlock that there. And then I can wind on, I'm gonna do a 25 dial cut. Lock that back up and engage this feed down here. You can see, well, you didn't see it before, but it's cutting a lot better than it was, so that's ideal. You can see that continuous stream of uh, swarf there, so yeah. And here's the hard spots making that racket. Just while that's cutting, I'll show you the crank that it's going on. Uh, so I've got to balance this one. I did just spin it just now, and it doesn't really look too far out. I mean, it's sort of 15 out on the front end. Switch that. About eight or so out on the back end, so shouldn't have to do too much to the crank itself but we'll have to see about the front pulley, flywheel and clutch. So you can see there, that's the finish we're left with. It's not as shiny as it is when you have it sort of going faster, but it's smooth and that's the important thing. So um, now I'm just gonna put, probably just put a little chamfer on this edge because it gets quite sharp and then I'll, I'll get it off of the lathe. So as you can, uh, you can see there, I've just put a little chamfer on there, just took the edge off just so it's not so sharp. Um, but yeah, that's it done. Um, we can balance that now and then get on with the build, I suppose. Right then, guys. Um, John, who owns that Cosworth there, has just bought in the crankshaft about an hour or so ago. That was all we were waiting for. He basically said that it's a really good, what they've measured, it looks like a perfect standard crank. Um, now, the reason I'm going to be showing you this, I know I've showed it you before, but it just emphasizes the, the, the importance of checking the bearing clearance. Um, so this is supposedly a perfect crank. Now, if you measure it going by the Cosworth journal sizes, um, it measures weirdly a consistent, almost one thou below bottom limit on the mains and the big ends. Um, a lot of people would think, well, that's probably what it should be then because it does look absolutely perfect if you look at the journals and as i say it's consistent so it's almost like it isn't where um that's just how it is but this is the reason that we check the housings check the journals obviously depending on what bearings you're using 
Um, you, we check it with plastic gauge as a final sort of check, really. I mean, plastic gauge is a sort of guide, um, but we certainly don't use that on its own. That is just a final check to see what you are actually getting. Um, now, this crank, a lot of people are obsessed with the standard cranks on the Cozies and they would pay extra to get one. But we always grind the journals. Um, there's two reasons. One, because of exactly what I'm gonna show you in a minute. And two, because you can't guarantee that that crank is dead straight. Um, over time, obviously these are 30 odd years old. They tend to bend slightly towards the middle, but it's only gotta be half a thou to a thou bent in the middle. And you're putting continual strain on that center bearing. So just an example, what I do is I keep various sizes in the king race bearings which i use um, this is a standard crank so what i've done just leaving this crank as it is i have put it in with a set of standard bearings um, and just talk down the two caps here to show you what running clearance we've got and if i get my little gauge here down here you can see that bear in mind this is about a 2.2 journal we are getting what looks like three thou running clearance. And here, maybe very, very slightly less, probably two, eight, two, nine, but it's near enough three thou running clearance. Now, going by your rule of thumb of one thou per inch of journal, um, if it's a performance engine, we tend to run very slightly less, um, but you're talking 2.2 thou so three thou is way too big on this um, it's a thou below bottom limit so to get that extra 0.8 of a thou even one thou we need to be grinding this at bottom limit so this is going to be ground to 0.25 on the mains i haven't checked the big ends yet um, and we're going to be grinding it to bottom limit now if you went ahead and ground this thing to top limit on a 0.25 you're probably going to end up with not enough bearing clearance. So it's very important that we always check beforehand if we can um, and then grind the crank in the correct tolerance because you've got about 0.6 of a thou tolerance on the crank. So it's the same with the um, mains housings. It all depends what the, main, what the thing has been line bored to originally. Um, and obviously it depends what thickness of bearing you're using as in what make, what grade it is. Uh, so yeah, very important guys, just thought I would show that um, if you went ahead and used that crank, not to say it wouldn't be all right, but it could create problems. Um, the more bearing clearance you use, obviously you need to be using a thicker royal. It'd be, a low, it'd be all right on a low performance engine, low load, obviously like a thicker grade. But with these Cosworths now tuned, we tend to run a 060 oil or a 1060 um, and obviously the more clearance you run, the more vibrations through the engine, um, the thinner the oil gets because of the turbocharger. So we like to run a thinner, a sort of a lesser clearance. So about 2,000, 2.2 thou on the mains, absolutely perfect. Well, that is it for today's video, guys. Until Monday, have a great weekend and we'll see you then. Take care.